today on Quaticism, the battle of the bro chachos, the men that make history, the things that go amazing in all of children's ministry, today on Quaticism. Well, welcome back, boys and girls, to another exciting game of Quaticism today. We're excited to have you here. And with us, the Benjamin Boys, the Brochachos. Remember, Benjamin Boys, the idea? Don't quack under the pressure. Today's question is question number 34. Since we are redeemed by grace alone, through Christ alone, must we still do good works and obey God's word? What do you think, boys and girls? The answer is yes. Yes, because Christ, having redeemed us by his blood, also renews us by his spirit. Now that's encouraging that when Jesus Christ died for us, he said he would give us a gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and that that Holy Spirit would come and help make us more like Christ, would renew us. And he does it for these three reasons. One, so that our lives may show love and gratitude to our God. We want to be thankful for what God has done for us. Two, so that we may be assured of our faith by the fruits, that by the things that we do, we then see the work of God in us, showing us that there is something changed, that we are a new creature, we are a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come, and we can give God thanks for that. And three, so that by our godly behavior, others may be one to Christ. That is a great thing to show other people the love of Christ and through showing them the love of Christ, have them see our great God and give him praise and give him glory. So that is our answer. Now, over the last few questions, we've been talking about this big word, justification. Remember, it's just as if I had never sinned. That's the simple way to do it. Or just as if I had always done right. This is the idea of justification. It's a one-time deal. Once we're saved, we are justified. It is the root of our faith. If the seed of faith, the gospel, comes in and then it produces life, the root is our justification. It says, hey, this person is connected to Christ. They are sealed in Christ. It is a done deal. And because of that, we then start growing. Now, because we have not reached heaven, we have not got to glory, our growing process is known as sanctification. And this growing process, we want to then ultimately produce fruit, good fruit for our Lord and Savior. And that is what we call sanctification. Well, let's get to our first game. Our first game today is Word Search. And we are going to be word searching out of these words, justification and sanctification. Are you ready, Benjamin boys? Starting in three, two, the first word is sin. Sin, S-I-N. Oh, Christian, Titus Winmer on one. Next one is Satan, Satan. Satan. Fish went round two. The next word is fact, 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 fact. What is the fact? Jed and Sin went round three. All right, here we go. Next word is fiction. 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 F I T. F I C T. I O N. Oh, right there, right there. Next word is action. And Jen and Sim get that word. The next word is satisfaction. Oh, it's 
a close one. No, Satisfaction! The final word is fit! Fit! Alright, Titus. Whoa, that was a crazy game of word search. I don't know if you saw it, but we had a little bit of controversy in round one. Some letters being kind of shuffled around, maybe taken, maybe not taken. Anyways, I talked to the judges after round one's decision. Jed and Sim are in the lead. Round one goes to Jed and Sim. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of these words that they were searching out of justification and sanctification. The word sin. Let's play a game at home. Do you think it was justification or sanctification that sin was being associated with? Or was it for both? Is it more of a justification word? Or is it more of a sanctification word? Or could it be a both word? Hmm. Well, it could be both, couldn't it? If you're talking about how you are justified from sin, the penalty of sin has been paid, and you will not have to pay for it, that is justification. If you're talking about how you are learning to overcome sin while you're in this life, that is sanctification. What's the next word we have? Satan. Do you think that's a justification word or a sanctification word? Hmm, tough one. But this is more of a sanctification word because we are wrestling against the powers of Satan and sin to overcome them in this life to become more like Jesus. But we are not declared right from Satan. We're only declared right from our sin. Satan is not the one that holds us. It is our sin that is the penalty that holds us in separation from God. And so Satan would really just be more of a sanctification word. All right, what's the next word? Fact. Something that's really true and it is what it is. Fact is always going to be a justification word because it is a one-time deal. That is the fact that we have been separated from our sin. Action. Things that you have to do. Things that you must make happen. Well, if it's an action... That's going to be a sanctification word, isn't it? Because it's something that we are growing in. It is something that we're continuing to move forward to learn how to get better at. What about this word, satisfaction? Ooh, that's a good one. Satisfaction, big word. It's a justification word. Because our sin and the penalty of it was satisfied by Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. That's why we are justified. Because... Jesus satisfied the payment and the penalty for our sin by dying for us in our place. Justification. And then we got to this last word, fit. Now, it depends on how you say fit. If you're declaring someone fit, that's a justification word. If you are saying, hey, you need to get fit, or let's keep trying to get fit, then it's a process, right? And if it's a process, it's sanctification. So we continue to see how we are growing in life. That's sanctification. But when we get to heaven, we will be declared as if we had never sinned, as if we had always done right. That is justification. Well, let's go to our round two now, true and false, and see what more we can learn about justification and sanctification as it pertains to how we should live godly lives. Benjamin boys, brochachos, don't quack in round two. Question number one. Justification means Jesus declares me right with God. The answer is true. Well yes. done, Fish and Titus. Question number two. Sanctification means the Holy Spirit is making me more like Jesus. Three, two, one. It is true. Well done, Fish and Titus. Question number three. Justification is the root 
of our faith. Three, two, two, one. Well done, Jed and Simeon. Yeah. The answer is true. Oh. Number four. Oh, I thought this was true. The fruit of our faith saves us. The fruit of our faith saves us. In essence, the works that we do saves us. And correct, that is false. Well done. It's not by works that we are saved, but by faith alone. Question number five. True faith should always produce the fruits of the Spirit. Yes, that is correct. True. Question number six. Sanctification is the fruit of our faith. If justification is the root of our faith, sanctification is the fruit of of our faith? The answer is true! Well done, Christian and Titus! Question number seven! The fruit of our faith is an assurance of our salvation. The fruit of our faith is an assurance of our salvation. The answer is true! Well done, gentlemen, for round two! Wow! That, again, was a close, close race. And in the game of true and false, it was a 5-4 to four victory for Christian and Titus. The game is now tied one round apiece. But let's think a little bit about today's verse. Coming from 1 Peter chapter 2, it says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. Do you hear all the special words that are being used there to describe you as a Christian, you as a child of God, you are a chosen, God picked you as if he said, I want you to be on my team. He says, you're a royal priesthood. He says, you are not just anybody, you are special, extra special, and you are meant to do something, a holy nation, you've been set apart. And what is it that we've been set apart to go do? He says that you might proclaim the excellence of excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. He says, you've been saved and you've been made special so that you could go tell the rest of the world how great is your God, how awesome is your God, so that they would know him as well. Now, he says, once you are not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. He says, when I made you special, remember, it wasn't because of anything you had done. He says, you were just like everybody else, but I came and I did something special. I loved you, and because I loved you, I want you to now go and love other people. And in loving other people, this is what life is gonna look like. He says, beloved, again, a term of endearment, a term saying, hey, you are special to me as my child. And I urge you as sojourners and exiles, which means people that aren't of this world anymore, you've been transformed, you've been made new. I want you to abstain from the passions of the flesh, things that go against God is what he's saying, which wage war against your soul. These things that go against God, they cause fights within us, right? Sometimes it's a hard thing to do the good thing for God's glory because there's something in us wrestling. He says, keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. So what does it look like to do good deeds so that we can glorify God? Well, when I think of good deeds, I think of the fruit of the Spirit. I think of love, right? That we would be people that would love others instead of hate them. We shouldn't hate people, right? We should be people of joy, people who are excited about the good things that God has done, not people of sadness that are depressed or, or upset all the time. We should be people of peace who are helping one another and caring for one another, not people of anger. We should be people that are patient with others, caring for one another, long-suffering with one another, instead of people that are just frustrated with life. 
We should be people that are kind and good to people, not mean to people. And we should be people that are gentle with people, not harsh with people. We should be people that are faithful, loyal, that we are always there for them, just like our God is always there for us, not people that are untrustworthy or always turning their back on someone. And finally, we should be people of self-control, not given to just selfishness and greed, but we should be people that really know how good God has been to us and take value in what God has done for us and then demonstrate that kind of love onto other people. It is my prayer that that's how you would live. It is my prayer that the fruit of the Spirit would grow in you. Let's see how the Benjamin boys do in the fruit of the Spirit opposites game. All right, it's been a close game between Titus and Fish and Jed and Sim. We are in round three, the opposites matching game, dealing with the fruit of the Spirit. Are you ready? Starting in three, two, one, go! game ever to date on Quaticism. We did have a little bit of controversy though again in this round. A couple people played a little ahead of what they were supposed to. Now I talked to Quacky. We worked this thing out. We gave a 10 second penalty to Christian and Titus because there was two players on the field at the same time. But even with the 10 second penalty, Titus and Christian, you are today's Quaticism winner. Well done. Congratulations. Well, as we think about what we've learned today, question number 34, since we are redeemed by grace alone, through Christ alone, must we still do good works and obey God's word? The answer is yes. Yes. Why? Because Christ, having redeemed us by his blood, also renewed us by his spirit. And he gave us that gift of the Holy Spirit so that we could do three things. One, we could live our lives to show love and gratitude to God, that we could then see the fruit of our actions, and we could then be assured of our faith, knowing that, God, you've been kind to us, you've been merciful to us, and you show me again and again how you have saved me and transformed me and made me new. And three, so that others would see our godly behavior, and they might come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Well, May the Lord bless you, and may he help you to honor him in all you do. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.